Welcome to the Lynette Zhang YouTube channel, where we support community and sound money globally. Help us build this channel and grow this community on a global basis by subscribing and hitting that bell. We'll let you know when we're posting our next video. But I also want to let you know that starting on March 26th at 11, uh, 11 a.m. Pacific Time and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we will be doing those videos live and taking questions and answers afterwards. So you don't want to miss that. So let's talk about a hidden danger. And I really appreciate the viewer that sent me this question and had me look at what's really happening in the insurance industry. Because people buy insurance thinking that now they're protected. Or if they are insured, they feel a lot safer. But the reality is, is that an insurance is a contract. And any contract is only as good as the counterparty to that contract. And while insurance companies have been a stable, while people consider them stable, well, that's okay. I could take risk because it's insured. Well, let me show you what's really happening throughout the industry that quite honestly has me pretty nervous and should have you nervous too. So we're going to start with housing because frankly, housing is on a global basis um, a key supporter in global GDP. In the U.S., it's 30% of GDP. And there is a hidden crisis that is unfolding right now. And you might not even see it unless you are in a state that is impacted by this. In places most prone to wildfires and hurricanes, state insurers of last resort are absorbing trillions of dollars in risk. Why? Because insurance companies are moving out of those areas. And if they don't do something to change that, well, then people don't move into that area because they can't even get insurance on their house. So states have turned these plans into a magic hiding place to disappear risk that just gets too big for the private market. Did you hear that? States have turned these plans into a magic hiding place to disappear risk. So you don't even see it coming. But ultimately, who is responsible? It's, it's going to be the taxpayers. With the state-sponsored insurance program backstopping real estate transactions in the riskiest areas, more people have moved in. This population amplifying loss potential, as the study calls it, rose more than 180%. In the end of the day, one way or another, it's coming back to taxpayers. So you might not even realize what's going on until it's too late. What are you doing to protect yourself? I mean, there are a lot of ways, especially if you're now, you know, the bug out location that I have, fire is a big issue. So we do a lot to mitigate that risk. Um, the house itself is made of metal. So even though it's lived through a fire, thank goodness, it's because we did, we're did. we doing as much as we can to protect ourselves. What are you doing if you're in an area like that? But the home insurance market faces unprecedented carrier exits and restrictions amid soaring premiums. So you're paying more but frankly, you're getting less. Now, take a look at this. This goes through uh, March, U.S. home insurance, quote, declinations. So that means that you're applying for home insurance and you are getting declined at the same time that the cost to renew is growing. And isn't that true with all insurance? I mean, we, we all can see that. You are paying a lot more and getting a lot less, which is why the states have to come in to backstop and support this. But a record level insurance rates impacted mortgage eligibility for borrowers, with 68% of lenders indicating that home insurance caused an issue related to a borrower's debt to income ratio, DTI ratio. 
So the premiums going up, so your ability to get insurance is going down, your premiums are going up, that pushes you into a higher ratio and you can't even get a mortgage. Do you see the problem? Because it is coming. And real estate in the US at 30% of GDP, they don't want to impact the houses. So the next insurance that we're gonna look at is life insurance. Life insurers face their own unrealized losses on long duration bonds after US interest rates climbed. That's no small matter. Oh, and I put away my sterling silver chopstick. But that's no small matter as the entire insurance industry managed an aggregate of more than 2.8 trillion in bonds at the end of 2023. Why? All right. When you take out an insurance policy and you're like, okay, well, I have a fixed rate, a fixed rate annuity or something or a life insurance policy or something that's supposed to pay out at a specified time, some point in the future. And then the insurance companies buy bonds to meet those obligations. But remember, we had 15 years of zero interest rate policy, ZERP. And remember too, as interest rates go up, the market value of those bonds go down. So what do you think about the insurance company's ability to pay these out? Any contract is only as good as the counterparty to that, re to that uh, contract. So what you're looking at here as a level of uh, number of insurers with negative valuations, and you can see how this is spiking, as the aggregate is going down, the bank estimates estimates that roughly one third of insurers had aggregate IMR losses as of Q3 2023. The longer term average is 15%. So it has more than doubled. These are insurers and, and it impacts their ability to provide those guarantees. Though that's what we're looking at here. That's a big problem, wouldn't you say? So you still feel safe with your life insurance, your fixed rate annuity, because there's a big problem underneath and you aren't going to know about it until it's too late. This can insure it, even if you don't want to liquidate it, right? If you want to maintain your position, you need to be properly protected. So if that goes away, you're, you still have the same amount in terms of purchasing power. The point of the temporary, oh, so they, look, we know they do not change behavior. They just change the way they account for that behavior so that you don't know what's going on. Again, it's all about hidden risk. When does that risk become clear? When it's too late to do anything about it. But the point of the temporary accounting rule change from the National Association of Insurance Commissioners was to shield life insurers' capital from losses caused by rising interest rates. Don't change behavior, just change the way you account for them so that the people that are going to be impacted don't know to get the hay out of the way. But I'm saying get the hay out of the way. This is insurance. You hold it, you own it outright, it runs no counterparty risk. And that's according to the Bank for International Settlements. U.S. employers to see biggest health care cost jump in a decade in 2024. And you can see how fast that's been rising since 2023. Huge. Now, so far, those costs are being shielded that increase in premium. How long they're going to do it? Well, it's hard to attract and retain workers. So that gives you some level of control at this point, but that will probably change. Additionally, it feeds into the pricing inflation because if a corporation has to pay more costs, whether it's for premiums or utilities or whatever, they have to pass. There's only such a level that they can absorb those costs before they have to pass them through to you. But at the same time that the employer, the employers may be absorbing the increased premiums, 
those deductibles are going up and those are not being those are not being absorbed by the employers those are absorbed by the employees since 2008 when the system died general annual deductibles for covered workers have increased eight times as fast as wages oh isn't that handy right so this 212 percent from 2008 when the system died and that's when they started the qe quantitative easing zero interest rate policy the system was already broken. What difference does it make if they did that? They know what's coming. That's why central bankers have been buying gold hand over fist. But their wages have only gone up 28%, while the cost, the deductible, has gone up 212%. So the premium goes up, the deductible goes up, the wages do not keep pace with inflation. They never do. That was by design, by flipping design. Employees pay that increased deductible. And here, there's been a remarkable surge in auto insurance costs. And that fans U.S. inflation. All of this fans U.S. inflation. Car insurance ratio soars to a 47-year high. 47-year high. Goodness gracious. That takes us all the way back to 1976. What was happening then? Oh, yeah. We were transitioning into a new financial system based on debt, making it easy to create as much money and as much inflation as they want. This was by design. Motor vehicle insurance premiums skyrocketed by 20.3% in December from a year earlier, the largest increase since mid-1970s, the government data showed. You have to understand that all of these costs are highly inflationary. When I say that, what that means is the value of this stuff has gone down dramatically. That's what inflation shows you, that loss of purchasing power. Think about what you could buy with this $20 bill even a year ago. And they want you to believe that inflation is getting under control. And you watch, I'm going to do a piece on this soon, on the countries that are dropping their interest rates to stimulate the economy. I've been saying forever, the, the central banks are between a rock and a hard place. They're trying to fight the inflation, create unemployment. But are they really, are they really tightening? Okay, they're allowing their balance sheet to run off. But Conditions have been looser than ever, so we are still fanning the fuels of inflation. And according to the monetary velocity, I believe, this is my opinion, I believe that that is a warning sign that we've already begun the hyperinflationary stage. Less coverage, surging costs, oh goodness gracious. U.S. tells health insurers to relax the rules because we are in a different world. And, and they what they'd like is everything to go digital so they can control it, they can see it, all of that kind of stuff. But if all of your wealth is held digitally in intangible assets, you get hacked, they can steal it, the markets implode, take your pick, you don't hold it. Therefore, legally, you don't own it. This, you hold, you own. No counterparty risk. Everything I'm showing you here is counterparty risk. Lifting the rules could speed access to care for patients. It would also add more uncertainty for insurers that have a harder time gauging their expenses because of the hacks disruption. So insurance companies also have to take on insurance for cyber. Global cyber insurance, and they're counting on reinsurance companies, which limit the losses to the insurance companies, and that remains key to growth. The global cyber insurance market has recently returned to profitability following two years of rate increases and tightening terms and conditions. Do you read the fine print? Who does? They make it like a book, so you don't want to read it.
and you trust them to have your best interest at heart. And I'm not sure that that's true. In fact, I don't think that that's true. Annual premiums reached about $12 billion a year at the end of 2022 and are likely to increase by 25 to 30% per year by 2025. 20, is your income going to increase by 20 to 30, 25 to 30 percent a year over the next three years, two years, one year? One year. Yeah, we're in 2024 already. What am I saying? One year. No, not likely. S&P Global Rating Survey of Global Multi-Line Insurers and Reinsurers suggest that growth in cyber insurance will depend heavily on reinsurance to provide capital and manage accumulation risks. We better hope that they don't go out. And by the way, reinsurance is a big line, well, insurance and reinsurance for Warren Buffett, huge. But let's take a look at the one that really, they all impact you. But I want to remind you, for those that feel comfortable and safe with their money in the bank, what you are looking at from the FDIC is unrealized gains and losses in securities. Now, I got news for you. This is what it looks like for the insurance companies as well. They have all of these unrealized losses. How safe do you feel? Because they're, what's been happening, and I remember as a stockbroker, if an insurance company went under, a, another insurance ca company came in and absorbed them so that the public didn't know that there was a problem. Is that going to continue? I don't think so. Just like we're seeing a difference in what the banks are doing with the zombie corporations, and we're experiencing more uh, defaults in the corporate bond market because the banks are just not wanting to or can't afford to hide those losses anymore. We're going to see the same thing in insurance companies. And the FDIC is an important insurance company. So these are the unrealized losses. You don't see anything in positive territory. Everything is in negative territory, whether it's held to liquidate now, or it's held to maturity, which is garbage. If you get a run, you got a problem. And by the way, we all remember what happened like a year-ish ago. How's that diff fund doing? This is still the most current report, 623, but there is $117 billion in that deposit insurance fund to pay out uh, depositors for banks' failures to insure, so $117 billion to insure $10.6 trillion, forget the uninsured deposits, $10.6 trillion or 0 0.011, so a hair more than a penny for every insured dollar. We saw that they had to bail out those three big banks that failed Silicon Valley, et cetera. We've seen recently New York City Bank that had absorbed a number of those assets from the failure having to be bailed out and being bailed out by private equity. Do you think that there's enough money to bail all of this out? There isn't. There isn't better not be too many bank runs at the same time. In 2008, the FDIC stated if even one more small bank failed, it would be obvious to everybody that they were out of money. Well, look at this. They're out of money and it hasn't really improved. This is 2023, June of 23, right? It hasn't really improved since the debacle in March, April. And there have been several banks that have failed since then. So what are the central bankers doing about it? Well, they're buying gold. What you're looking at here are gold holdings in the official sector, so in the reserve assets through 2022. They were selling, 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 buying, 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 growing that gold, those gold holdings to retain their choices and their freedoms. 
and to ensure against the loss of this because they're quite clear this only has as much value as you have trust in it. What supports it? The full faith, trust, and the ability to grow more debt. That's it. Do you really trust that? Because frankly, I don't. And there are far more central bank buyers, which is this blue line. This goes back to 2000, manipulating the price. And I mean, they've done so many funny things, leasing it, etc. But here you go, definitely more buyers than sellers. And central banks, even last November, gross purchases 60 tons heavily outweighed the gross sales. And what we're talking about here is also, you know, look at it's minimal. Central bank demand maintained its momentum because they know what's coming. They're engineering it. And yes, they want to keep you inside of the system so that they can transfer and take as much wealth as possible. I'm telling you, get out of the system into sound money. Execute that strategy. That is critically important because gold is the ultimate insurance. Just ask the central banks. It's that simple. So if you want to help us grow and become part of this community, I'm telling you, it's it's what we have in mind, I don't believe has ever been done before, what we're working on. It will be unveiled shortly. We are working on it diligently. At some point in here soon, you will be able to buy your gold and silver from us. And it will be in multiple forms because we want everybody to get as protected as possible. And we have to be as independent as possible. So show your support, grow this community, give us a like, leave us a comment. It can even just be an emoji, uh, you know, a thumbs up, a hello, anything, because that helps the algorithm spread this. Share, 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 because ignorance does not make you immune. It just leaves you vulnerable. And look, I'm showing you a huge level of vulnerability. Become your own insurance agent. We can help you do that. And, and pretty soon, I'm even going to release a phone number. You can call us. Just have a little patience. And in the meantime, send your questions to questions at lynettezang.com. Because I know if we can help build communities locally so that you can sustain your standard of living and globally so that we can make a positive difference. I mean, if we don't do anything, there's no chance that we're going to have the ability to influence what's coming. But I want us to have a shot. Whether or not it'll happen, I can't guarantee you, but I can guarantee you this. I will show up. I will do the work because I work for you. That's who I work for. Together, we can make a positive difference. And so until next we meet, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.